Thank you. And now, uh, Representative Biggs from South Carolina. Thank you, Chairman Bavin, yes, for holding this hearing on chemical regulation. And thank you to the witnesses for being here today and offering uh, your input based on your education and experience. Um, I really appreciate it. American science is the best in the world and has been for over a century. We have long dominated science innovation and the United States is the best destination for pursuing new and innovative chemistry. My background in healthcare has afforded me the opportunity to read a few, maybe too many, um, evidence-based practice studies, but anyway, here we are today. However, I would like to point out that political agendas and bureaucratic red tape have stifled American scientific advancement. Since the mid-1980s, the EPA has run a program known as the Integrated Risk Information System. IRIS was formed by the EPA without congressional approval, and its data has been used by TSCA, the Clean Water Act, state and state agencies to make hazard determinations based on flawed assessments. Both IRIS and TSCA have produced hazard values for chemicals that are sometimes below background atmosphere levels or what is produced by the human body. For example, the IRIS value for ethylene oxide has been cited at roughly 23,000 times lower than what's naturally found in humans. This placed undue burden on industry to comply with standards that have no basis in science and human health. And it has led to delays in approvals on new chemicals and higher compliance costs for older ones. President Trump is committed to restoring the American gold standard of science. His executive order released in May commits federal science to free itself from the partisan political agendas that have absolutely restrained American innovation. To that end, I would like to direct my first question to Mr. Corkwell and um, to Ms. Bertrand. Congress structured America's regulatory system to consider the risk associated with real world uses. This uniquely provides our nation with a competitive advantage in innovation over places like Europe and China. However, as I mentioned before, IRIS seems to push unsound science that is far beyond what is reasonable and, and practicable. Can you speak to how the IRIS system has undermined that competitive advantage of our risk-based regulatory system? Do you want me to start? Yes, um, so it, we agree that um, it's vital that sound science serve as the foundation for regulations. There's two components there that you mentioned when you start, when you talk about um, consideration of risk in the real world. Um, one component of that is what can come out of an IRS assessment, which is the um, estimate of a level at which could produce harm. The other component of risk are real world exposures, having the best available scientific information that's based off a of weight of evidence is imperative for both of those parts to make sure that we get things right and we can maintain competitiveness uh, globally. Um, what has been found with some of the IRIS assessments is that they have been at levels that are far more stringent um, and they're not in line with what is in place in the rest of the world. And in fact, for some of them, the values of IRIS have been at levels that have been lower than what is produced by the body so in other words, it's predicting harm at levels that the body itself routinely produces. So we would very much advocate for the use of the full amount of data in doing these types of assessments because it can impact, and it has a lot of, um, it, it can impact our cons the, the competitiveness once you start looking at risk. At Lubrizol, we do not utilize IRIS in any of our submissions. As, as I talked about before, we are very much in the specialty chemical business where moving a double bond or adding a single other atom 
greatly changes the performance and the environmental profile. So we prefer to do the testing for the advantages that we're looking for and also the benefits on the environmental profile rather than using broad models. Thank you so much. And my time has expired, so I yield back, Mr. Chairman.